Hi, shalom everybody. I just covered this video on the blood of Jesus, the blood of Yahushua. Today is March 16th of 2024. Um, I know I've been really quiet for a long time. <laughs> I haven't really shared much, but it's been, um, the Holy Spirit's been impressing upon me to kind of share my testimonies about just trusting, trusting the Lord in your walk if he's calling you to move. Um, so that's what this video is about. If God is calling to you to move, and I'm just going to share some testimonies about what I've gone through, um, and you know, just trying my best to know the Father's will, walk according to His will, even when so many people didn't understand, especially family. Because um, I've since I've come back to Yahushua, Jesus, for like over a decade ago, I've moved around a lot for Yah. Now, some of the times the moves were being directed by a false prophet who I thought was a real prophet of the Most High God. But, you know, I still always prayed and sought the Lord and I was never like warned not to go. Um, so I feel like, I feel like the father, you know, the father still used it all, you know, because he, he shares in the word, of course, that he. He will work all things out for the good of those that um, those that love him and are called according to his purpose. Okay, so sorry, I like tried to put all my hair up. Um, okay, so first of all, you want to make sure you're hearing from God, and that sometimes can be difficult because you need to be born again of the Holy Spirit. Yes, but um, I would say fasting and reading the Word a lot is going to be helpful. But it does say in scripture that let a matter be established by two or three witnesses. So I think it's wise for big things like this that you do reach out to a man or woman of God that you know are walking in truth in the spirit and holiness um, and ask the father to maybe direct or guide you to somebody that can confirm uh, the move for you. And and um, everybody, I mean, I was sharing this like over 10 years ago when I started on YouTube is like everybody should be seeking the most high about his will for their lives, including where you're living. Even if you live there your whole life, very few people do this. Be like, Father, is you know, what is your will? Where is it that you want me to live? Because I'm willing to go and do whatever you want me to do. And, um, you know, like a situation recently with me, I'm about to go and visit my family in Virginia. And I was so upset because I'm going to miss my brother. And my brother's like, he's going to be getting back into Virginia literally like a couple days after I leave. And he's like, why can't, you know, why can't you just come later? You know, do you have to do what he tells you to do? I mean, I know because he was kind of upset too. Like we've always been very close and I haven't seen him for two and a half years. So and I was like, well, I, I do have a choice, but I know it's wise to be in the Father's will. Um, he's God. He knows everything. And being in his will and timing is where you're going to have protection. It's where you're going to have provision. It's where you're going to have blessing. You know, I could be missing. If, if I go in my own time when I think it's a good time or when everybody's there that I can see everybody that I want to see, right? I could be missing out on people that the Father's got divine appointments of people for me to minister to and witness to or things that he's going to bless me with. Just like, you know, yesterday I had an appointment to go get more work done on my truck. Um, praise God. I have <laughs> uh, a credit card for like um, car for car work, which has six months interest free financing. But after I got the work done, um, I went to go get gas and there was a young man that was sitting there by the gas station with two dogs, 20 years old, you know, missing teeth. And I just, my heart broke for him and I didn't have any money to give him. I didn't even, I mean, I would have, if I had a credit card that had room on it, I would have even bought him a hotel room. Cause I've done that before many times for people. Um, and I like doing that. Like we should be doing these things when we see somebody in need. I, I didn't have the money though, but I got all of the change that I had in my pocketbook and gave him all the change. And he was happy. He, he was happy to have that. And then I prayed over him. You know, I talked to him about if he believed in Jesus and if he got any of those um, death jabs and which he did get one and prayed over him for reversal of damage and for healing and healing of his knee and for people for favor with men that people would send people to him to help get him into like, you know, stable, permanent housing and get him a hotel room for the night and things of that nature. So, you know, I'm just the reason that I'm sharing that is because, um, 
it's very important to be always led by the Holy Spirit. It's very important to be in um, the places that God is sending you because he has work there for you to do. And yes, you could do work wherever he is, but this is a thing like even, okay. So even like this guy's testimony that I was listening to today, who, you know, has been um, struggling with a homosexual lifestyle his whole life. And from what I found, most people that are living that lifestyle were severely abused when younger, rejected, neglected. They have an, you know, an orphan spirit. They, they also, most of them were molested when they were young. Um, and that brings in these spirits and then they end up acting out because spirits, these unclean demonic spirits can affect your, your, you know, your emotions and your thoughts and things of that nature. So, um, he was sharing in his testimony about the abuse that happened at church with somebody that was working at the church that was also being elevated as a leader in the church in the, in the music division. And that was sent on a missions trip that he was sent on a missions trip with it and put in the same room with. And so this is what I'm saying regarding that is that so many churches and leaders in churches and people going to churches are doing these missions trips because this is what we're supposed to do. This is what God says to do. But like how many of them are really seeking the Lord in prayer and fasting to hear from him because he says in scripture, my sheep hear my voice so you can hear from god the gifts of the holy spirit are still for today they still are in operation that's why it says in scripture even to covet the gift of prophecy um and it even says in scripture that i mentioned to somebody the other day right it says that we will do not everybody but some of us we will do greater works than jesus did than yahushua did right so we haven't seen that yet so how are we going to do greater works than yahushua did without the holy spirit without the gifts and power of the holy spirit okay so um, so what he was, what I was, what I was, um, commenting on his video regarding that is because it just frustrates me because like my family are very good Christians. They go to church on a regular basis my whole life, but you know, they don't really have respect or understanding for the walk in my life of what I'm doing for the Lord. Because mom's like, you can serve God anywhere. Why can't you come here? There's people here that need Jesus. You could witness to people here and live here with your family. And, um, I did try to do that one year and I'll, I'll share that with you in my testimony to encourage you about moving where God is sending you, about seeking him, about where he wants you to be because he has work for us to do in these last hours. You know, we, we should be striving or um, seeking to be one of the harvest workers, you know, I mean, what more reward, what greater reward can you have than winning souls? It says in scripture, a wise man is about winning souls. So this is something that will, you'll forever have reward um, for doing and saving people's lives. Uh, what more rewarding job can you have than that? Than, you know, going to college or one, the multitude of other careers there are. I mean, of course, if God tells you to do a particular career or sends you in that, then do it. But how many people actually pray or have their children seek the Lord about, hey, does is it God's will for you to go to college? The Most High God, Jesus, Yahushua. Is it his will for you to go to this college or that college? Is it his will for you to get this degree or be in this career field? Like what, what is his purpose for you? Right? Because he created you. He put the gifts and talents in you. He knows much better than anybody else of where you will feel most fulfilled and it will have a most rewarding life, you know? So, um, so my point is like with a lot of the churches, they're dead. This is why God brought me out of the churches a long time ago. And they are just doing all these missions trips and they're not even seeking the Lord about who's going on the trips. It's, you know, I mean, because there, there is not the fivefold ministry operating in most of these churches and you have to have the fivefold ministry. It is not biblical to just have a pastor. You know, you're supposed to prophets, teachers, evangelists, apostles, um, you know, people should be flowing in the gifts of, of the Holy Spirit and in, which including discerning of spirits it says these signs will follow those that believe they will lay hands on the sick they will be healed they will cast out demons you know things of this nature so how many churches do you see operating in deliverance and healing and signs and miracles and things of that nature very few it's just you go in you listen to a nice little sermon you have some nice worship music and then you go home like there's not even like community where like you're hanging out all day sunday like when i go to like shabbat fellowships for the sabbath which is the fourth commandment of god 
mind you, which in scripture, it's never says anywhere that it's okay to throw out one of God's commandments. Um, the seventh day rest day, which is a sign between him and his people. Okay. That he's the most high God that sanctifies us. Yahuwah Elohim. Some people say Yahweh. So we would spend like all day together on, on the Sabbath, you know, and it's really nice. You get to know people and, and, and like, I've tried to go to churches a few times here and there. And it's like, nobody takes the time to even get to know the new people or the single people or, you know, cause I've been new in town like so many times and that's not how it should be if it's a community of believers. Right. But again, so they're not operating. These churches aren't operating in the fivefold ministry, which is already there in sin right there. Um, they're not seeking the Lord for his will. Like, is it your will for me, Lord, to go on this missions trip? Is, is, is it your will for this person to go on this missions trip or for us to even do this missions trip? You know, um, because so there's a difference from just doing to do versus doing because it's his, the father's will. Cause you, you know, you've made the Lord, the Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Lord and King of your life and your time and your church and the what your church or your organization is going to do. You know, most people and churches don't do that. So it just angered me because so many are molested in churches and there's a lot of spiritual abuse as well. The twisting of the word and, you know, people's, you know, having, you know, saying, don't you dare judge me. Don't you question me or anything like that. And that's wrong because it says in scripture that we are to we are to test and prove all things. We are to discern the spirits and test the spirits. We have discernment, which the definition for discernment is righteous judgment. Um, so, I mean, I was just sharing all that because my point was about as born again believers, having Jesus, Yahushua as king of our lives, being led by the Holy Spirit, we should not just be doing things to do things because that's where in scripture it says like your works will be burned up because their works... And a lot of people also have like their church or their ministry or their position in church or what they're doing for the church as an idol because God didn't tell them to do that. They're just doing it because they think it's right or just to stay busy and they're helping all these other people and they're doing so much good work. But is that what God called you to do? Is that what God, you know, directed you to do? Are you in his will? You know, maybe there was another purpose that he had for you. You know what I'm saying? So, and there's so much devastation that's going to come on this earth here soon, as well as like where I live in the United States. So it's very important to be seeking the Lord about where he would have you live, whether he's going to move you somewhere. Because he started moving people years ago where these and started having people, even some people set up Goshen's, which are like properties, um, properties of, of refuge and safety for some people during the, you know, like great tribulation. But, you know, he's going to be moving some people to keep them in, in, in safe. Um, you know, out of harm's way. Some people he's, a lot of people he's moving, has been and is still moving for, for ministry to, um, to use you. He's strategically positioning his elect, his children all throughout the world. And a lot of times he's going to move you away from your family. And, um, so, you know, for years I went from when I, you know, I, my first big move that I made was when I came back to the Lord and I left Florida with my daughter um, this, yeah, I guess this would have been like third. No, she was in high school. So maybe like 12 years ago. And I, I was in Fredericksburg, Virginia with my family. And then the Lord moved me to Lynchburg, Virginia. And then the Lord, um, was guiding me to move to Kansas city, Missouri. So this was like the first move that I've made ever being like directed by the Holy spirit on my own. I didn't really have anybody to confirm it. So my, my kind of, my, and at the time I was dealing with one of the false prophets that had come into my life and like taken my daughter from me. So, I mean, it was just a really, really hard time. And, um, that's like a whole nother story. But anyway, so when I was in Lynchburg, Virginia, and I was seeking the Lord about moving, I was like, I had five cats at the time, four bunnies and two pet rats that I let, got for my daughter. I don't like, I never wanted, when she asked me that she wanted rats, I was like, I don't want to have rats. And then anyways, the whole animal story is another thing. So I let her get rats because I love my daughter so much. And honestly, they're very smart and very sweet. I had this huge like Midwest, you know, five level cage for them. And then with the bunnies, that was another situation. We ended up getting, um, you know, kind of rescuing two bunnies. And then we kind of added some friends for them. And so I had like little Hall and Lop and Lionhead bunnies, which I really miss my bunnies. So I was in like a really nice two level apartment that the father provided for me in Lynchburg, Virginia. And mind you, Okay, so I guess that was really my first move directed by him because I was in Fredericksburg, Virginia, and he directed me 
to Lynchburg, Virginia, because I was looking at the um, the Christian college there, hoping that my daughter would, would go there, you know, because I started homeschooling her. There was a good Christian college there. And then a false prophet came in that we went to go visit for like Sukkot or Feast of Tabernacles. And like my daughter didn't end up coming home with me and chose to stay with them. She was like 16 at the time. It was just, I mean, that's a whole, I've just been through a lot of crap. Like, and as a single mom, you're not having like a, um, you know, a husband, like you are more vulnerable spiritually. And, you know, there's a lot of things that were still needing to be broken off of me that were like legal ground for the enemy to come in. But so I've been through a lot of deliverance and healing over the past decade. Um, and then the enemies put a lot against me to, you know, block me from my calling and destiny. And, um, but the father will use it all for his good. So if anybody's been through heart and we've all been through hard things, it's different for everybody. Doesn't make it any more, less painful or hard. If, if you are, you know, if you really love him and want to serve him and, you know, and, and, and love your neighbor as yourself, be about winning souls. You know, I mean, even if, even if you're not doing that right, God still promises that he will use, work out all things for our good. So anyways, that first big move. Um, was to Lynchburg, Virginia. And I had, this was a year I ended up lost, losing two high paying sales jobs, working from home with commission, base salary plus commission benefits. Cause like I got no help from my ex-husband. Um, and I lost these two jobs within one year. So like that was scary. But like after the second one, because I mean, I, I lost it, both of them because of my faith. And uh, I wasn't led at the time to sue, although I probably should have. Um, but you know, I'm much better with hearing from God now than I was then. Um, but the Lord did bless me on getting me on unemployment. So I had, mind you, I had no, did I, was I work? No, I had no job. <laughs> I had animals and, um, I had no credit. Yeah. I had bad credit and somehow a miracle of God, he hooked me up and getting this really nice two level apartment in Lynchburg, Virginia. Why? Because I was obeying him and going where he told me to do, going where he told me to go. Now, once in Lynchburg, Virginia for about a year and a half, he was directing me to go to Kansas City, Missouri. I didn't know anybody there, never been there before. And I said, well, Father, you're gonna have to do a miracle here because I have 12 animals, five cats, four bunnies, two rats, 11 animals. I was like, you're gonna have to do a miracle here, right? Cause I, I was work, I did find, I did get a job, which I had for a while working for a company like 30 hours a week, um, like scanning stuff in stores, going to different stores and like kind of scanning things. So, and I was, I did, the father made it possible for me to uh, relocate that with that job from Kansas City, Missouri to, I'm sorry, from Lynchburg, Virginia to Kansas City, Missouri. But I still wasn't a full-time job. Um, it wasn't like a substantial amount of income to like rent a nice place because when you're renting places, you know, they require three times, three times the income of what your rental place is. So if your, if your rent is like $1,100 a month, they require, they would require like three times at most places plus good credit. And I have animals. Most places don't rent if you have animals. If they do, it's maximum of two and there's like a high fee. <laughs> so I was like, all right, Lord, if you want me to go to Kansas city, Missouri, I will go there, but you need to, you're going to have to do a miracle and moving upon somebody to, to rent a house to me. Um, so somebody that was already over there that I kind of had just met on social media, um, said, I know this older lady that, you know, you could rent with. So I talked to her and we decided to rent together. Um, but again, I still didn't have good credit and all the animals was like that total miracle for that to work out. So I found this really nice house in Kansas city, Missouri, just like couple miles down from IHOP and it said on the ad, no pets, absolutely no pets. <laughs> but I was still led to contact the owner because like I've done sales like my whole life and I know, you know, my training and it's like, you never know unless you ask, you know, they, they might, they'll probably say no, but you know, you never know. Just ask. Doesn't hurt to ask. Um, so I, I contacted the guy, let him know that I had a few animals I didn't tell him how many and everything at first. I just said, I have a few animals. Would you be willing to consider renting to me? He prayed about it. He came back and said, yes. Then I told him all the animals that I had and he still agreed to rent to me when his ad said no pets. So I gave quite a bit of stuff away 
packed up, moved from Lynchburg to Virginia all the way to Kansas City, Missouri, rented a beautiful house. Um, there was a whole situation there with the lady that I that I that I lived with, which was was not good. Um, but the father eventually got her kicked out and I, I had a beautiful place and a beautiful, you know, back fenced in yard for all of my animals. Um, then a few years, um, I was just kind of moving from Kansas City, Missouri to Roach, Missouri for a month. I stayed and did work on this Baptist Convention Center property. Then I went to New Mexico. Then I was sent to Montana. Then I went back to New Mexico. And like there's, there's a whole story with all that stuff. A lot of that was, um, I don't know if I want to go get into all that, but it was just, you know, a false prophet tell, you know, kind of directing me in different places, but God took care of me everywhere I went. He did miracles for me everywhere I went. And I wish I had documented everything because I could probably write a couple books and novels about it because I had miracles and provision all the time. Because my heart and my desire was to go where the Lord wanted me to go and to do what he wanted me to do, even though it was hard, even though it was scary. My parents didn't understand it. After I got disconnected from that last false prophet, um, I had given away um, for the second time. This, like a couple times I gave away most of the things that I had. And the last time, a few years back, I gave away everything that I had, except for a few outfits and some bathroom, some bathroom supplies, like personal um, things. So I had given away everything that I had, and that was really, really, really hard, but I did it because I want to obey the father and not have idols in my heart. And, um, and then, so when I, when I got out of that kind of disconnected from that ministry, helped to expose it, help another sister that had been younger sister that had been in it for much longer than me. Then the Lord, um, directed me to Virginia. And I was, I was thinking I was going to get to live there and finally be with around my family. I'm like, it's been so long. He's still not brought my husband. I'm lonely. You know, I've been traveling to all these places, always a new, new person. And, um, you know, and I just wanted family around. I wanted support. So I was trying to find a rental. I did, um, end up, end up renting a place, but then it didn't work out and I had to take the people to court, which I've never had to be in that situation before. But anyways, I was like, okay, something's obviously not right here. I'm like trying to do what I want to do. I, I'm deciding, you know, I want to stay by my family for a few years until br the Lord brought my husband, but he had other plans. And so basically I just got alone one day, you know, told all my family, you know, I'm just going to take some time away. I was sitting outside, like at the back of the property, just reading my Bible all day, praying, had my pen and paper. And I was like, you know, and fasting. And I, I think, yeah, I was fasting too. And I was just seeking the Lord, like, where do you want me? Where is your will for me to move? Now also the Lord, I don't, I don't know if any of you know, Glenda Lomax, she's a, a prophet, prophetess of God, the most high God. And she's got a lot of books out uh, with, you know, all the prophetic revelations the Lord's given her over the years. And the father has used her many times to speak into my life of confirmation of things or just words of wisdom and encouragement when she didn't even know me because she, I think she still does this sometimes, but she would just do, you know, YouTube. Uh, she would just be praying and um, seeking the father for a word for pe the Lord would just be giving her words for people. And then she would upload it you know, this hour long of all these prophetic words that she's getting and she would just upload it to YouTube. And like so many times she had gotten words for me that she didn't even know. I mean, she never met me, didn't know. And I was like, it was always very helpful and encouraging and confirming. But this time when I was in Virginia, I was connected with Linda because we were emailing back and forth. And I was like, listen, I just would like you to please pray for me because I'm really seeking the Lord about where he wants me to be because things are just not working out here in Virginia where my family are, even though this is where I would prefer to be, but I, I know I have to be in his will and go where he wants me to go. And I also knew, you know, I mean, and the father does have some people in areas that we know devastation is coming to, but he will protect them through it. That's why it's important to be where he wants you to be and not have fear about if he's sending you to an area that you know there's going to be devastation. Like he's either going to pull you out right before that happens, or he's going to translocate you like they Philip he did with Philip in scripture or yeah either one of those two or just have the angels protect you right um because I've had I had a night vision you know a very a dream which I knew was from the Lord that was like a vision 
And I was seeing a nuke go off in D.C. I was standing in my parents' backyard because my hometown is in Fredericksburg, Virginia, which is halfway between D.C. and Richmond. And also a lot of people have had words, dreams, visions about the tsunami taking out the West Coast, East Coast. You know, when I was in Florida before I left there, I had what I knew to be was a very prophetic dream from God about um, Miami because I used to spend a lot of time in Miami and South Beach the weeks I didn't have my daughter and I had had a prophetic dream about Miami getting taken out by a very large tsunami. Like it totally like just snapped in half a high rise that I was in like the penthouse of. So it was a really kind of scary dream. But then once I got to the bottom, I was in a boat rescuing people. <laughs> so that was very prophetic. Um, I don't think that that's not literal, but anyway, so I was, I, I just spent the day praying and fasting and just totally in the words, stayed off the internet where do you want me, Lord? And so he told me, we're sending you to Arkansas. Never been to Arkansas. It's in the middle of the country. You know, it's like 19 hour drive from my family without stop. So it's very far away from them. I don't have husband. I don't have family. I don't have a network of community there. I don't know anybody there. I don't have at this time, right? I had no job <laughs> other than ministry. Like father had called me to full-time ministry. But like when you're looking to get um, a rental, they want to have verified income, a job and know how much money you're making every month and have that verified. So, and I didn't have good credit. I didn't have a job. Right. So that, and at the time I didn't have pets cause I had also let go of all my animals when I left Kansas city, Missouri for the Lord, which was really hard. And some things happened with that too, because there was a lot of witchcraft involved as well. Um, so I, I had been at this point without animals for like five years, which was really hard for me because I really love, really love animals. And again, like not having a husband um, and always like just I was living, I lived by myself with my daughter, but then when she left, it, you know, it was just me. And so it's nice to have animals around. <laughs> so they help. They help a lot. They're a blessing. Okay. So the Lord told me you're sending me to Arkansas. Um Glenda got back to me and she'd prayed about it. And the Lord told her, she's like, I see a vision of you going west from Virginia towards the middle of the country, kind of towards in the direction of Tennessee. And that was definitely confirmation from me because, you know, Arkansas is right on the other side, on the west side of Tennessee. Now, God was testing me, though, too, because she didn't get confirmation that I was supposed to come to Arkansas. Like that's all she saw. Right. So I just had to trust. I, I know he was testing me and how, trying to help me mature and my, and my ability to hear from him and trusting what I'm hearing from him. Um, because I, and I'm still, you know, <laughs> still working through that as well, just because there was a lot of trauma from just being, you know, connected to all these false prophets saying, God's saying this and saying that when it's not God, it's another spirit. It's a counterfeit spirit or whatever, or a fallen angel or a demon, you know? So I'm very careful about when people tell me this is what the Lord says, or, you know, they're saying, you know, um, when people are telling you, you know, that the Lord says this, this, and this, you know, I am very careful about that because we need to, we need to test the spirits and not just you know, just believe it because they're a nice person or they have a lot of followers or they've got a big church or they seem really sincere. They can, you know, again, a lot of people can be very sincere, but sincerely deceive themselves and they just don't know it. Doesn't mean they're intentionally lying to you or trying to deceive you. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, um, it was about another week as I continued to press in and seek the Lord that he then told me we're sending you to Eureka Springs, Arkansas. So first he told me the state that he was sending me to. Then he told me he was sending me to Eureka Springs. So my family, again, like this is like, I don't know, the third or fourth time that I've left them. To do, they were like, did not get it. I sh I'm sure they thought I was being led by another spirit. And, you know, I, I, I it's nice that they love me and want me around because I want to be there too. So that made, made it very hard. But the Lord says in scripture that everything that you, you give up and, um, suffer for his sake that he will repay you a hundredfold in this life. So leaving, you know, things, giving up things for him, um, yeah. leaving, you know, hometowns and families, or maybe, you know, he's been sometimes even splitting up uh, marriages because people didn't marry the right person. Um, 
and it would hinder the work that he wants to do with them in these last days. Um, okay, so so I left Virginia again and just think about this. Like I had nowhere to live. I didn't know where I was going to live um, or anything. So, I mean, a lot of people are being called to areas where they don't also the same situation. They don't know anybody there. They don't know where they're supposed to live or where they're going to work or anything like that. Just know that if you know for sure and you've gotten confirmation that God is directing you and sending you somewhere, he will provide for you. You will have favor there. You will have blessing there. You will have provision there. I have done this so many times, even when there is false prophets kind of guiding me, father always still provided for me miraculously. Like I could maybe just start doing little clips of all the different times that he's done this because we need to be sharing our testimonies. The word of God says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimonies. So what the Lord had me do was he had me go, um, he had me buy a timeshare uh, the summer prior or maybe a few months. I don't remember the time frame, but, you know, I took my mom, we went down to Florida and, you know, I wanted to see my daughter down there and the Lord directed me to buy a timeshare. Uh, I think the main reason for that is because he had me witness to two men that were there, like the, this guy that was selling me and then the man that like finalized the, the deal. Um, because the guy that was selling it to me had several of the shots and he was a believer. Um, so the Lord had me share things with him about that to warn him, pray for him, pray over him, give him information about it. Like you cannot get any more of these. The other gentleman was a very strong Christian and his wife had actually gotten one of one or two of the shots for her job. And so the Lord had me witness to him with my mom wife right there. It, you know, explaining all this to him. And because of that, his wife, you know, went to the church, shared it with them, had people pray over her, left her job. Um, and it, I think it was a huge, sorry, my cat keeps <laughs> walking across a huge impact in their lives. Okay. So sometimes we don't always understand why we're doing things. You know, this is what it's about seeking him, knowing his will and doing his will because he can have reasons for having you go places or do things that you might not even understand but just stepping out in obedience and faith can change the trajectory of somebody else's life um it can cause them to you know bring them salvation or um you know just like it says even people that already have accepted him right they're on the wrong path or they've been deceived in some way. So you're getting them back on that straight and narrow path. Um, it talks about that in James, right? That, you know, there's, it says love covers a multitude of sins. And also when you somebody's on like the wrong path and you get them back on the right path, that that also covers a multitude of sins. I forget exactly the scripture, but um, word for word, but you get the gist. So... So because I had that timeshare, what the Lord directed me to do was um, book a timeshare, the timeshare in Branson, Missouri for a couple weeks. So I was there in, back in October of 2021 because I was just there again this past October in the same place two years later. <laughs> so he had me book, he had me book that place. Well, first he sent me to Texas, um, to, for Sukkot gathering down there. Then, then, yeah, then I went and stayed in the timeshare as I'm trying to find somewhere to live. <laughs> Couldn't find somewhere to live during the time being in that timeshare in Octo October, 2021, I was listening to Apostle Samuel Malambe, uh, which somebody just directed me to his channel. He called me out on a prayer call, had this beautiful word, you know, for the Lord, just confirming more, you know, things that the father had shown me about ministry and that's on my channel and I lit up you know lit up really bright because you know it was just a very anointed thing that happened it was very beautiful um I'm not connected to Apostle Samuel right now the Lord told me that in the future he will be reconnecting us but I've kind of pulled back from his ministry just because there's a few things that I don't really like and one of them one of them is the fact that he calls himself the man that God uses and I don't like that because it's almost like a kind of like a prideful thing. Like you think you're used, God's using you so much more than anybody else. But there's a lot of people out there doing God's work that aren't just, you know, online or maybe you just haven't seen, you know, I mean, we're, we're all one of many. 
that God is using and nobody should ever be calling themselves the one. Like, I mean, how would you guys look at me if I said I'm the woman that God is using? It just sounds arrogant and prideful. So, I mean, no disrespect to him. I love him and I pray for him and we all make mistakes. You know, I'm just surprised nobody else has like said that to him. But sometimes what ends up happening when people have a strong anointing and you know, they can't get off track because they've got so many people kind of idolizing them. And this is something that the father warned me years ago because he said, I will make your name great, obviously, to bring glory to his son and to win souls. So for years, he has been warning me, make sure you give all of the glory to me. You know, so always divert people back to me, give all the glory to me because it can be so easy we always have to be on the lookout for pride. It can be so easy when so many people are praising you and people can just idolize you then and they're not seeking God for themselves and they're just seeking the prophet or the apostle or whatever. And that's dangerous. But anyways, so, so I was there for a couple of weeks. I couldn't find anything. Then the father moved me to an Airbnb closer to Eureka. Then I moved to another Airbnb which even like this past summer for six months, I was traveling from one Airbnb to another, which I've, I've actually heard a lot of testimonies of other sisters in the faith that have went through the same thing or are still going through the same thing. Um, I didn't realize that there were so many others that the father was, was kind of putting through the same process. Um, but that was encouraging to me because I was like, <laughs> I mean, I knew he was like having me minister and do things in the different areas that he was sending me to and praying over them, but it was still hard. You know, I had like, he's promised me certain things, including a home and land. And it hasn't happened in the time frame that it was supposed to, I thought it was supposed to happen. And a lot of that honestly could probably be because I was just sharing it too much with everybody in excitement and the enemy, you know, put up a lot of blocks to it, which he can do to delay things. Right. All right. So anyway, so I was in all these different Airbnbs and I'm like, oh my gosh, Lord, did I hear you right? Because I mean, I had visit, you know, Glenda said she saw me going, you know, this way, but she didn't specifically get Arkansas. On the way over to Arkansas, the Lord had me stop in Tennessee to visit this lady named um, Betty Stevens, who used to have a lot of videos on YouTube and she doesn't let just anybody come to her house, but the Lord approved for me to go there. So I stopped you know, they have a um, home in the mountains in Tennessee and uh, the Lord had me stop there to visit them. And she got nothing. I got nothing from her confirmation of the Lord that I was going to the right area. So it was kind of scary, you know, like, did I hear you right? And as I'm there in these Airbnbs, I'm like, really was freaking out. Cause like, I'm still haven't, you know, I was in the timeshare for a couple of weeks. Yeah. I went to Scott and then I was in another Airbnb for a few weeks and now I'm in another Airbnb that I rented for a month. I'm like, did I get this wrong? So I was just like praying and fasting and praise God. You know, the father used apostle Samuel to give a word for me, you know, as well. Like you are in the right place. There is a famine there. I don't remember what the specific word was, but basically there's a famine there. Like there was a famine for rentals, but I'm going to come through for you. And literally like that week, like the Lord had impressed upon me, to, you know, to get back on Facebook because I got off years ago to use the marketplace and the pages. And he, had, and he had me post an ad on the Holy Spirit, mind you, through fasting, directing me to post like a little, you know, um, ad or comment on the um, downtown Eureka Springs business page for, so for business owners in Eureka Springs, like I had posted in the, like the rental places and the real estate and homes places and got nothing. So, and, and there's no rentals in Eureka Springs. If anybody's been there, it's a big tourist destination. You either own a house or it's all Airbnbs and vacation rentals. So there's very few rentals there. I was running into people that said they had been there for years and still hadn't found a rental because like a few come up here or there. And then most of them, they don't even allow animals. And I was really wanting to get animals again. Um, and more than just one, <laughs> cause I don't, I don't like animals not having one of their own kind around. Um, so that week I, I made the post and like literally the next morning after I made the post, this lady commented because I was like, I want a couple bedroom house. I would like a fireplace. You know, she's like, I have a place that you can rent. Obviously she hadn't had it. She didn't have it listed anywhere. Nobody had known about this. She commented on my, on my Facebook post and I just made 
excuse me, I went to try to make it private immediately because I didn't want anybody else to steal, like see that and steal my rental. So I just did, did a screenshot of it. And even her, her number was missing a digit. This was another thing too, and I don't remember right now, but her number was missing a digit. I think it was the number five which means grace. So she had told me what her name was in the post and that she had a house, but she put her phone number on wrong. So the next day I'm like calling the phone number and it's not working. And I'm like, Oh no, but I had her name. So I did like an internet search, like a people search and praise God, her number was, I found it online. And like I said, the one digit off was five, which means grace. So I got in touch with her and met her like almost immediately to go view the property and she was not concerned about doing like a credit check or a background check. She didn't even call all of the people. And this has been every, like even this place that I'm renting now, like God's done such miracles. I mean, I have excellent, um, what's the word, excellent referrals from my previous landlords, but she didn't even call and check that. She didn't check credit. She wasn't concerned about, about verifying any income. She's like, you know, if you just get the money to me, the place is yours, you can rent it. Um, we'll do a year lease and then month to month. And she's like, you know, if you want pets, that's fine. You don't know worries. I don't mind you having pets. She didn't even like put a limit on like the number of pets that I could have. I mean, like what? And listen, the house was a mess. The house was filthy. I did a lot of work and clean up to it, but it had a wraparound deck and it was right on Beaver Lake. So I had a beautiful view and I was like outside, it was Eureka Springs address, but it was like outside of like the downtown area, which I was so grateful for because I have a big lifted truck and I was like, downtown is like everything. So I don't like, first of all, the gay stuff going on downtown and it's like, the, it's so crowded. I wouldn't want to live there. There's like really steep hills. Everybody's right on top of each other. And I was like, Lord, I really don't want to live there. And this is the other thing too. When I was in that Airbnb, the Lord was ministering, the Holy Spirit was ministering to me was ask for more, ask what you want, believe for more in this time. And as the Holy Spirit's ministering to that, to me and telling me that I'm like, well, you know, there are a lot of lakes around here. And I was like, I miss living in Florida, being on the water because I had rental houses and apartments, condos on canals in Cape Coral, Florida. And I really loved that. And also being able to drive right down to the beach. So there's pros and cons to the areas in, you know, Florida and, and versus Virginia. I love all the mountains here. And, you know, well, I'm not in Virginia anymore, but Arkansas, same, still lots of mountains and trees and stuff. So, but so when the father impressed upon that, man, I'm like, I was like, well, I would really love to have a house in the lake, you know, which I know is like, how is that even going to happen? Like you can't afford to rent a place in the lake. You have no verifiable income. You don't have good credit. Like, I mean, but you know what? God does the impossible. When you step out in obedience and you walk in obedience and you take these leaps of faith, he will come through for you. So this lady's house was on Beaver Lake. And after I met with her and I went back to the Airbnb that night, Apostle Samuel came on because he does like a lot of prophetic broadcast apostle Samuel came on and said, I see an angel giving keys to somebody right now for a place. And I just started like laughing and crying because that was confirmation for me because I had literally, you know, given her, um, was meeting her the next day to give her money and get keys for the place. So like the father was confirming it to me beforehand, excuse my dog, um, barking in the back. There is something else that I wanted to mention. Oh yeah. This was another thing that I knew that I was in the right place before. I got confirmation through that prophet was when I was in the timeshare, um, in Branson, Missouri, I, the father had sent me to look at a property that was for sale in Eureka Springs. And it was like a million and a half dollar property, which I don't have the money to buy that, <laughs> but I just went in obedience to go look at this property. I'm like, well, I know the father's promised me lots of, you know, a lot of money for his purposes, mind you. So let me go check where the dogs are barking at. Hold on. Okay. Sorry about that. So I went and looked at this property. Uh, the realtor was a very strong Christian man and lost his wife because of the shots and his daughter because of the shots, which was really sad. Um, and then he invited me because the Lord also said through Glenda that I was going to get an invitation to like a Christian group. And as he's driving away from the property, he stopped his car he knows that I keep the Sabbath and he's like, well, do you go to Sunday church? And I'm like, I do sometimes if the Lord leads me to do so. And so he's like, he invited me to his church, you know, because the Lord 
had an assignment there for me. So that was kind of like the reason for him sending me to look at this million dollar property. I was thinking I was going to get money and be able to buy that property, but that wasn't the reason. It was just to meet this realtor for an invitation to this church. And then the Lord did have me share with the, with the leaders of the church some things and they did not receive any of it, <laughs> which I'm used to that. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, that was like a little tidbit that Glenda had given me from the Lord. So that was kind of confirmation. And then when I went home, when I left Eureka Springs to drive back to Branson, Missouri, that, that evening after the meeting with the realtor, I felt a very strong demonic presence on me. Like I just felt, I felt very uncomfortable, very uneasy about living in Eureka Springs. And I was just like, I, and I felt like something had attached to me as well. Like when I got back into the, um, the unit, uh, the timeshare unit. And I was like, I just, I don't, I, everything in me, I was like, I don't want to live there. I don't feel good about Eureka Springs. I don't, I feel uncomfortable with that place. And I realized I was like, this is a demonic attack. Like something's going on. And I just felt uncomfortable. Uh, and like eyes were on me and like something was there. And I still forced myself to go to sleep because I had prayed and it had not lifted. And so I went to sleep and then in the middle of the night, I had a dream that was more like a vision that was actually happening in the spirit, but I was asleep and I, I, I got up out of the bed because there was a dark storm outside of the condo unit. I was like on the second floor with the balcony. So in the bedroom, there was like a door to the balcony. And so the door to the bedroom from the balcony had swung open on its own. And there was like this storm outside and darkness. And so I, you know, it's like, but it just felt very creepy to me. It felt like I was in a horror movie, to be honest. It was terrifying. Not just more creepy, but terrifying. And so I went to go grab the door and, and close it. And I mind you again, like this, I knew I was sleeping, but it felt like I was physically still doing it. So it was like happening in the spirit. And I went to go close the door and I went to go close the door. I sense the presence of an entity beside me. And I turn around and, and I look up because it was a very tall scared, like just putting terror into me, very tall entity. And all I could see was like his face just looking down on me and just this anger and disgust. And I slammed the door shut and I knew it was a fallen angel. And I was so creeped out. And I, and I immediately woke up from that and I got out of bed and I just started praying, just praying in tongues and warring in tongues and praying some prayers that like William Shobelin has. He's got a ministry with one accord ministry about like fallen angel visitations and um, I tried to call Brother Jim because he's one of my prayer, an elder in the faith, one of my prayer partners. Of course, it's the middle of night. He didn't pick up. Um, so I prayed for like over an hour and it didn't seem like it had left. And I didn't know what else to do. So I just tried to force myself back to sleep because I'm like, I'm not going to let this stuff, this thing keep me awake and just sitting here in fear. And I, I prayed. I don't really know what else to pray. I prayed in tongues and did some other prayers and. So I forced myself to go back to sleep. And as soon as I fell back asleep, that tall fallen angel was in bed with me. And then between us was another demonic principality, like another smaller, like shorter statured fallen angel, but it was a man dressed in drag. And there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of homosexuals in that area. It's kind of like half Christian, half homosexual new age. And there's also like downtown, they have like Eureka Springs live. So there's like a lot of, um, um, transgenders and a lot of drag queens. And so this man was dressed as a drag queen and I knew immediately. So I, I was like, how did you get in here? They said, we use the app, try it again. I mean, this is, they have this stuff in the spirit, just like in real life. Cause there's other, I mean, there was more revelation that went to that as I prayed the next day with my um, prayer partner, who is a very highly called war warrior and seer. But I got up the little, man dressed in drag like got up and I like grabbed him by his neck like he was demonically speaking tongues to me and I started powerfully speaking tongues by the Holy Spirit to him and grabbed him by his neck and just threw him and then I woke up like I came out of it I guess and you know kind of woke up and I knew I could feel that they were still there I knew that they were there right and they were trying that's they were trying to scare me from going to Eureka Springs. And so I just got up and warred. I warred in the spirit and prayed in tongues for like three or four hours until the morning. 
And I don't think it wasn't until later that afternoon, later that afternoon that I spoke with Brother Jim. We were praying about why, I was like, why were they allowed to do this? Like they didn't have legal ground to be attacking me, but because they, they did, that gave us legal ground to attack them. Cause you don't always just go after like principal, demonic principalities over an area. Um, and then the father had told me like I had been promoted and then that night or the next day, the next day is when the first time that I got called out and had this prophetic word spoken over me by, uh, apostle Samuel on like this prayer call with like a hundred and some people, um, just kind of confirming my calling that I would be, you know, worldwide, ha you know, ministry for healing, a uh, very strong healing ministry and prophetic ministry and be on TV and like all this kind of stuff. So that was, that was kind of exciting, but I'm saying like that happening was like another indication that I was in the right place, you know? Um, like even though my family didn't understand me going and didn't get it, other people didn't understand me going, like I didn't get confirmation through Glenda that I was supposed to be in Eureka Springs or Arkansas, just that I was going, you know, to West towards Tennessee from Virginia. Sister Betty Stevens, who is a very highly called prophet of the most high God, like she didn't give me any confirmation. And so I just stepped out in faith and, and, but the father, you know, provided for me, like the whole, you know, he has made sure that I've not gone without, I was always able to pay my rent and to help and to, and to, to sew in to other ministries, give to other people, help other people. Cause I'm a big giver because the word of God, you know, when I, when I'm able to give and I have the, the funds, you know, after my basic bills are paid, because God says, you know, you cannot outgive him. This is one of the principles of the kingdom, also loving your neighbor as yourself. And um, so anyways, like, again, the whole point, the reason I was making this video is like, if God's calling you to move somewhere, it is so, it's so important to know his will for your life, to know also where he wants you to live and move and to get confirmation of that. And even when you're a little bit scared or uncertain to just step out and take that leap of faith, with, just have a mustard seed of faith and he'll be there for you to back you up. He will provide for you. He will cover you. He will protect you. He will guide you and lead you. Um, and sometimes you only get like little tidbits, you know, you get a little, you know, like a little, um, you know, like what's the story where she like left all these like crackers in the woods or pieces that you're following or some, something like that. So sometimes you can only see like a little bit, a, there's only a little bit of light in front of you. You can't see like the whole path, you know, you just have to take it step by step and trust him. And so I'm still in Arkansas right now. I'm not in Eureka Springs anymore. Um, but I'm like just an hour away from Eureka Springs. So I'm still in the, in the Ozarks area, in Northwest Arkansas. Uh, and the father, you know, has told me that where I'm at right now, is just a layover season. This is not my, you know, permanent place that he's, he's sending me to because, you know, he's promised me major funding and wealth and land and homes and property that I thought was going to happen last year. <clears throat> and that hasn't happened yet. So like also part of like you moving is, is like walking into your promised land as well, because your provision, your calling can be tied to a particular place is what I'm getting at. And if you don't choose not to obey him or just completely like walking in fear and not trusting him, like you're going to miss out on a lot of blessings and also a lot of people, other people can also be missing out because God had a purpose for you to, you know, to use you to share your testimonies to them, to bring them to salvation or whatever it may be. However, he's deciding on using you. So I just wanted to encourage um, people today that um, especially when you're like a single woman doing this, like traveling across country. But look, I mean, the father blessed me. I got a rental on the lake, I yes, I did a lot of work to the, the rental and I had issues with rats. There was like, it was like giants in my promised land, right? Because I was talking to another sister who's up in Canada that's a prophet of God. And she was going through the same, same flipping thing. Like, I mean, it's crazy. And she's still, you know, was going through, and also going through the same thing with like moving around from Airbnbs, like, like me recently, like we thought we were going to already have our land and our, our permanent home. Like, you know, father's promised me like a debt free home. And then it would happen like a miracle and stuff. And it hasn't happened yet, but we just have to keep believing. And, um, you know, I got to get animals. I got to get some cats. Then recently this past summer, the Lord blessed me with a dog and then blessed me with a friend for Lily. So I have two dogs and six kitties now, which I love them all. 
all of these animals, like somebody said to me, well, if you choose to have animals, da, da, da. I'm like, dude, you don't even know what you're talking about. because You're not talking by the Holy Spirit. Yes, I love animals, but the Lord sent these animals to me to take care of. He confirmed these animals and he named these animals. I don't just go out and decide, oh, I'm just, I want to have all these animals. It's part of the father's blessing to me and also blessing to them. Uh, so they have, you know, some, a very loving, um, anointed environment to live in. You know what I'm saying? So because I sought the father's will about getting the animals, I'm like, well, if it's your will, you need to confirm it, you know, and you need to give me their names because you're the one that's going to have to feed them. <laughs> right. I trust him that he will provide for them. You know, and a lot of people are like, so many people have their own reasoning and opinions on things and it, it hurts sometimes, but we just have to forgive them and understand that not everybody can hear from God and hear from the Holy Spirit, even though they might be, you know, saved or there are different measures of the Holy Spirit and anointing that you can walk in. There are different levels um, of hearing him. You know what I'm saying? So when people don't get us or question things, yes, it can be upsetting and hard and frustrating because you feel like people are, they are unrighteously judging you and they are, you know, making comments about you to others and speaking badly about you and not understanding. And so that hurts, but we have to just, I don't know, we just have to love them and forgive them and ask, give all of our hurt to the, to the Lord. <laughs> and, um, as long as we know, you know, that we're doing our best to hear from the Lord and, and, and be in his will and do his will. Like he's going to take care of you. He's going to take such good care of you. Like the Lord even has spoken to me about this. He gave a word to sister Glinda Lomax about this, um, in regards to taking care of us. Like those of you that are, are, are willing to put aside like the pursuits of this world or what everybody in this world, even Christians will say, well, you should be part of a church or doing missions for the church or, you know, you're not doing it the right way, or you should be having a full-time, you know, regular job. Like, you know, you don't work. If you don't work, you don't eat. Like I've gotten that before too. And I'm like, but I am working. It's just not, I'm doing what the, what the Lord's telling me to do, you know? And I make sure to get confirmation about it as well. Because even recently somebody said to me, you know, well, you, you need to get a job now. You know, you just need to get a job. And I'm like, well, I'm willing to do that. I've done that before. I've, I got a job at McDonald's. I got a job at Teletech when I was in Montana. And this is mind you after I've done real estate, high, high you know, high level sales work. And when I, when I got a, like in my late thirties, you know, a call, early forties, like a call center job at Teletech, which is taking calls for bank of America um, the department that handles the overdraft charges. So I was literally crying at work every day, getting yelled at by these people that don't know how to manage their accounts and they think it's your fault. <laughs> Anyways, people are just ugly. It just, and just the environment was just so spiritually not good. But you know, I mean, I've done that before. I washed dishes at a restaurant for a long time in the mountains of New Mexico in Jemez Springs. Um, I, I cleaned houses and I washed dishes in a restaurant and you know, I'm willing to do whatever the Lord asks and tells me to do. And he knows that. So I don't need everybody else's approval. Like this brother in Christ, you know, is telling me, well, you need to get a job. And I'm like, well, I prayed about it, you know, cause I was actually kind of getting worried because you know, the person who had the, the fun, promised funds and, and miracles, uh, monies that the father has promised me has not come in yet. And I'm like, okay. And the main funder for my ministry was, you know, telling me that it was going to stop after this time because he was having to cut back because of things in his own life and his own businesses. And, uh, so I was getting concerned and I'm like, well, father, you know, but even before him, the Lord's always taken care of me as long as I did his will. But I was like, father, do you want me to get a job? Like, is it your will for me to get a job? And he kept telling me, he kept telling me, he kept telling me, I just want you to spend time with me, press in and prayer and fasting and you know, reading of the word, like basically, cause he wants us, he's trying to get us prepared for the work that we're about to do. Um, and that people are going to need us for. So, and also give some of us just giving us a time of rest and a time for healing. And, um, but I kept asking him, I pray, had others pray and got confirmation through two other prophets of God that it was not his will. So again, it's about being in his will and, I do think it's important to get confirmations from other people that are 
true prophets or men and women of God that hear from the Holy Spirit to make sure that you're not being deceived about not working because he doesn't call everybody to this. And it is, it is a walk of faith. It's, it's not, like I said, it was a little scary there for me a little, for a little bit, but I'm like, you know, no, I, I reject fear. I know that I'm in your will. I've gotten confirmation on it. I've gone, continuing to go where you tell me to go. There are some things that I'm still missing the mark and failing in, but my father is a good father. His word promises that I provide for all of your needs through your riches and glory. Messiah Yahushua, you shall not want, you shall not have lack, your, but your basket shall be overflowing. You know, there's all these promises uh, in scripture. And, you know, and I've, I've been in so many situations before that he's had me walk through on just a higher, higher level faith walk, you know, that, that others just don't understand or would never even, you know, because they, they're, they're, um, let's see, uh, some, some people make their jobs idols and their paychecks, like, which I did as well. Cause I freaked out when I lost my, those two jobs that year. And the father showed me that I had my trust in that paycheck and that job and that those health benefits, you know, cause that's how I was raised. Like you get a good job, you go to college which I didn't do because I got married and pregnant. You you get a good job, you do really well, you work your way up, you get make sure you have good pay and benefits, and just keep excelling. Like this is what we're told is is success in life. But God's saying, like in this time, like those of you that will be about His business, about kingdom business, about winning souls, and will put those other things aside and walk in faith to do His will, to know His will, to hear His spirit. Because even in the Old Testament, it says. Um, not only just where it says in the New Testament, my sheep hear my voice, but in the Old Testament, you know, Shema Israel is, is obey and listen. So he talks about not only obeying his commandments, but his voice. So it's not just his commandments and instructions that are in the Bible and scripture, but it's also his voice. What is he speaking to you about your life and your situation? Have you fasted and prayed and sought him on that? And so it's, and it's so important to also not idolize any prophet of God or apostle because you need to hear from him yourself first and you can pray for confirmation through another man or woman of God. Like that's, I do suggest doing that. I do suggest that because there can be mixture. You know, some people we've not, we're still learning or we've not even learned that the enemy can, you know, your, your thoughts can be from the enemy you know, familiar spirits, the Holy Spirit, or even just yourself. So you've got to have, be able to discern between where that thought is coming from. You know what I'm saying? So that's why it's good. And, and you know what it says in scripture too, there's safety in a multitude of counselors. You know, if you having good counselors in the faith, elders in the faith, pray for God to connect you to the right men and women and pray for him to expose the ones that are, that are, that are, um, you know, walking in, maybe they're not intentionally deceiving. Maybe they're just deceived themselves, but still you want to ask the father to expose that to you or just remove them from your lives and pray for them. Um, because the, the, you have to remember the enemy can also counterfeit all the true gifts of the Holy spirit. So it's not, it can't, we don't want to be in fear about it, but we need to be, we do need to be wise about it. We do need to be discerning and testing and seeking God about everything. Like the Holy spirit, having the right Holy spirit, is so important. Um, yeah, I could go down a whole nother path with like the Kundalini spirit and all that kind of stuff. But point is seek to know his will, seek to do his will. You will be blessed and he will bless you to be a blessing to others. And if you are about winning souls and doing kingdom work, especially in these end times there, he has said, he gave had given a word through Glenda. Like there is nothing that you shall not want. Like he is happy to provide abundantly for his children that want to be used by him and are willing to go wherever he says to go and to do whatever he says to do and to speak whatever he says to speak. Um, so I just wanted to encourage you in that, you know, if you feel like the Lord is calling you to move to fast, pray, Make sure that you know you're hearing from him and, and, and ask him to bring or direct you to somebody that can pray with you or for you to confirm what his spirit is leading you to do. That is my counsel. So I hope that blesses you. This is an extremely long video, but um, I've been silent for way too long and I 
feel like I need to start sharing some of my own testimonies. Like, I, I mean, honestly, and I've been seeing like so many other women of God that the fathers recently like brought me to their channels, like other women that are called as a, you know, with an apostolic calling on their life as well. And I'm, I'm like, gosh, there's so much that I could be speaking and sharing about. And the enemy's just kind of like muffled me. Like I just haven't had the confidence that I used to have to start sharing these things. And I want to, so I'm trying to like break out of my shell again <laughs> and, and get back to where I was. And, uh, because again, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So I hope this was a blessing to you. If it was, please like the video, please comment below. You know, if you have any questions, you know, if you're, if you are led by the Lord for me to pray for you for confirmation of something, I would be happy to do that. Um, my email is um, on my channel here. Shalom.